Oh. <laughs> Modeling 3D context buildings is an important step that'll really bring your projects to life. Uh, Hawaii? Uh, what was in my mouth? It'll communicate to others that you really understand the surrounding built environment. <laughs> I actually put 10 3D buildings in the description available for you to download, although you probably want to learn how to make them yourself. Today, I'm going to show you how to model context buildings in Rhino. If this is our first time meeting, my name's Christopher, and here at AltArc, we offer an alternative perspective on all things architecture and design. In this tutorial, we're gonna take elevations from buildings in Google Earth, and we're gonna translate those into 3D models. If you're actually wanting to create like a whole overall site model, check out the video linked here and also in the description. All right, let's jump right in. On the left-hand side, let's click our search icon. I'm going to pick a building in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. On the bottom right hand side, you'll see your little guy and drop him in a street view. So I found this building on the corner here. I'm going to line myself up right next to it and then zoom out with my mouse wheel. What I'm going to do is line it up about as straight as possible. I'm going to search on my computer for an application called the snipping tool and I'm going to open it. From here, click new and drag the box around your building facade. I'm gonna go up to save. I'm gonna save it into a folder that I created previously called context building. Here, I'll just name it facade one and click save. Now let's pan up a little bit so that we can see the top of the building. If your building is really tall, you may have to do three images. And once again, let's take another screenshot using our snipping tool. Click new and drag the box around your building facade. Make sure to capture the top of it. Click save. And I'm gonna name this one facade two and click save. Perfect. Now let's go into Photoshop. Now I'm going to open up the two images that I saved in Photoshop. The reason we're in Photoshop right now is because we need to correct the perspective of these two images and then align them together. With that final image, we'll bring it in a Rhino and then we can trace it. So if you've used Photoshop quite often before this, you probably already know how to do it, but I'm just gonna run through these steps pretty quickly. If you click on the rulers on the left and top, you can actually drag them out and create guides for yourself. I'm gonna create a vertical and a horizontal guide. Next, I'm gonna unlock my background layer and I'm gonna hold Control and press T. On the Mac, that'll be Command T. I'm going to right click and select Perspective. If you hold Alt and move your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And now I'm gonna use the control points around the border of this selection so that I can try to remove as much perspective out of this image as I can. When you're done, press enter. And now let's move to our second image. We're gonna do the same thing here. Unlock the background, hold control and press T. On Mac, that's command T. And use the control points to remove the perspective. When you're done, press enter. It's all right, if your image quality isn't perfect, we're only using these images to trace them. So now I'm going to extend the canvas by using my crop tool. When you're done, press enter. And I'm going to grab the facade from the other image and drag it in. Try to align it as best as possible. A couple things that can help you align these is by using Ctrl T to transform them. And also you can adjust the opacity of the images on the right hand side so you can kind of overlay them a little bit better. All right, and like I said before, the image quality really doesn't matter too much as long as you can see what you're tracing. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and crop this in as tight as possible. When you're done, press enter and we're going to go to file, save as copy, and let's do facade final and click save. All right, now let's go ahead and head over into Rhino. Now that we're in Rhino, I'm going to go into my top view and I'm going to select my facade final, click open and place it in your 3D space. The scale of it at this point in time doesn't matter because we're going to edit that later. Go over to your layers tab on the right hand side. I'm going to go ahead and delete layers one through five so I can clean up the layer panel. Now I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to name it trace. What I like to do is click the picture, go over to the material button and change the opacity to about 25%. After you've done that, click your picture again and use the command lock. This way, when you're tracing, you don't accidentally move it. I'm going to activate my trace layer and trace away. There are many, many ways to trace a building facade. More often than not, your building facade is usually very repetitive. So what I try to do is find what elements are repeated, draw those one time, and then copy them around as much as possible. Just remember, as you're tracing this, accuracy doesn't really matter that much because a lot of people aren't really going to examine your context buildings. They're really just there to add extra detail to your renderings or possibly perspectives or whatever you pull out of it. A couple great things in Rhino that help you trace things better is making sure you have smart track on and then using commands like copy or mirror. Okay, I'm going to show you how to quickly do the windows. First, you're going to outline one window, click it, and use the command offset. Now, if you click through point, this allows you to just click wherever you want the offset to be to. Now I'm gonna use a polyline tool and draw the mullions. I'm gonna roughly place this mullion and then use the mirror command and flip it off of the center of that previous mullion I drew. So now I'm gonna offset each one of these mullions. Highlight it, use your offset command, click both sides, and then through point. You can go ahead and delete that center line. All right, select your mullions, trim, and let's get rid of these cross sections. When you're tracing these, you want to try to make every element a closed curve or surface. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to close off these mullions. Now I'm going to highlight the mullions and use the command join. Now we can actually copy this across. Use the command copy. All right. And because we can see this portion of the elevation is exactly the same as this one, I'm going to just copy this portion over. Because these columns go all the way up, I'm gonna go ahead and draw them so I can use them as a reference. And after you've done that, you can once again copy it over. Now I'm going to draw this window on the left-hand side here using the same techniques we use for the other windows. Now after that's been done, let's go ahead and copy our windows all the way up. There's a little trick here. So first, highlight your windows and click the bottom right-hand corner of your selection and move it up to the next spot. Eyeball it and then confirm. Now go ahead and cancel out of the copy command and now select the new ones you just copied over and use your copy command once again. And now you're gonna select the top of the other windows. So that way, every time you add a selection, it's gonna be perfectly spaced. The perspective is slightly off, but that's okay. Now with my building facade at the top here, there's a lot of detail, but I'm gonna ignore most of it. And now I'm just going to finish up any details that I didn't hit before. Okay, and now that you're done, we can go ahead and unlock the image layer and then delete it. So what I like to do is start with the most shallow masses. In this situation, it's going to be the window mullions. So I'm going to select all the window mullions. 
and then I'm going to go into my right view. Now I'm going to use the command extrude curve. Our building still isn't to scale, so usually I just eyeball this. Okay, now let's go back to top view and let's select the windows. Let's go back into our right view and use the command extrude curve once again. This time I'm going to extrude it a little bit more than our window mullions. Now once again, let's go into top view. Now all you have to do is keep repeating this process with each building element. Okay, and now that you're done extruding all of your elements, let's go into shaded view. And I like to go into perspective and just check it out and make sure I have everything right. Now there is one thing that we're missing and it's the back wall. I'm gonna go ahead and trace the outline of my facade, select the curve and then turn it into a closed surface with the command planar surface. You can go ahead and delete that curve on the outside. Go ahead and select your full facade and type in group. Turn on your gumball tool here at the bottom and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Use the command move. Click a bottom corner somewhere and I like to type in zero, zero so that it moves to the origin point on the C plane. Click your facade and if you hold alt while you click this blue curved line here, it'll actually copy your facade and rotate it. I'm gonna do 90 and hit enter. Now I'm gonna move the new facade over to the corner. Now a cool little trick you can do here is highlight them both, type in mirror, and click your two corners. There you have it. Now we just need to add a roof and a floor. So the easiest way to do this is go to top view and use a polyline command and trace the out and trace the inside of your building. After you've done that, go back into perspective view, click the new polyline that you've drawn and type in project to C plane. This will project the curve or the line you just drew onto the C plane so it's completely flat. And make sure to click yes so it deletes this original one. As you can see, it moved it to the ground floor. Now we can extrude this curve. And remember, don't go to the very top because most buildings have a parapet. And there you have it. Now that your building is complete, you can scale it to the correct size and drop it into your site model. If you like the video, please like the video and consider subscribing down below if you want to see future content just like this. So if you're looking for a video to teach you how to make a site model, check out the video at the top there. Also, I think you'll like the one at the bottom as well. Thanks for watching y'all. I'll catch you in the next one.